Hello again everyone, Comic Kid here, welcome back to the channel, and today is our first ever run versus run segment. The purpose of this segment is to compare two runs with the same character. So today's example will be Scott Snyder's New 52 Batman run up against Tom King's Rebirth Batman run. Eventually I plan on comparing like uh, Tomasi and Bendis' Superman, uh, Slots and Spencer's Spider-Man, and so on and so forth. But for today we're starting off with Snyder vs. King. Now the most important thing to understand here is that one, I, I won't be comparing which run is better or worse than the other, I will let you know which one I prefer, but the purpose is to just explore what each writer does differently with the character. I know a lot of people really like what Scott Snyder did, and I know a lot of people are really liking what Tom King is putting out at the moment. And if you prefer one to the other, that is totally fine, but the purpose is to just compare the two and look at specifically the different writers' approaches to Batman. Now, we'll start off with Scott Snyder on New 52, just because it was first, it's older, it came first, it's going first. Scott Snyder relaunched uh, New 52 Batman back in 2012 as part of DC's New 52 relaunch. This was a continuity reboot of sorts. Uh, some of the old continuity was kept, but a lot of it was rearranged. But if y'all are familiar with the New 52, then y you know all of this already. Scott Snyder definitely started out with a bang with his Court of Owls storyline. Uh, this is the first trade here in the video, but the storyline actually kind of encompasses the first two trades. The great thing about Scott Snyder's run is that he really takes Batman back to his, like, horror detective roots. Uh, Scott Snyder is known for a lot of other horror books as well, like Witches, Severed, so on. Uh, the Wake is also a really good one. And so it's really, really nice to see a lot of those horror elements in Batman here. That being said, it's not like a scary story at all, but there are definitely some pretty intense moments and some pretty intense like events and all that. Uh, especially in this first arc here, when Batman's in the maze and the pages are flipping, like it's a really, really cool way uh, to see how Batman gets lost, because you as the reader also kind of get lost as these pages are turning and flipping, and it, it was just a really, really cool experience. Just about every arc of Scott Snyder's New 52 run is considered an essential at the moment, with the exception of the Jim Gordon stuff, and I'll get to that in a minute. But Death of the Family, Endgame, Zero Year, all that especially is some pretty important and top-notch stuff, uh, even t like to this day. Uh, Snyder hasn't been on the title in a while, and it's still considered some of the best stuff. He also gave us a very modern uh, and the current definitive origin story for Batman, and a lot of people really liked that because he sort of borrowed from all the best elements of every other origin. You see a lot of things like the Red Hood Gang, he pulls a lot from Zero Year, he leads up to the Joker, but he also tells an original story uh, for an early years Batman as well, and, and it's really good. If you, if you haven't read Zero Year, I do highly recommend it. It's a great kind of summarization of a lot of origin stories for Batman. And then Death of the Family and Endgame are two very good, very essential Joker stories, if you ask me as well. Death of the Family comes first, it's volume 3 in the New 52 run, and it follows Joker as he's out to, you know, get Batman, but he strikes it everyone else in the family first and saves Batman for last. And I won't spoil too much, but Death of the Family alone shows a great dynamic between Batman and the Joker, and it also proposes some really cool, really intriguing ideas as well. And with Endgame, on the other hand, it, it's very good as well. It kind of serves as, like, a, a finale to the first part of Snyder's run, you could say. Um, again, it just kind of continues off the dynamic established in uh, Death of the Family. It's just joker on a whole new level of pissed off 
both are really good. I believe it's volume one through seven if you buy the trades. Um, and then I think it goes up to uh, 40 if you buy these single issues. But both are great. I do highly recommend them. Now the weakest point in Snyder's run is with the Jim Gordon Batman stuff. During this time it was the DCU, like DCYOU, and not a lot of people were huge fans of the books DC was putting out at this time. Uh, Jim Gordon was Batman, uh, Clark Kent was back to his golden age superpowers. There, there were just some really weird changes to the books. Uh, you saw a lot of character redesigns during this time also, and so, some worked, some didn't. It, it, it's weird. And then, in my opinion, the Jim Gordon Batman stuff didn't quite work. I totally get what Snyder was going for. The whole point of making Jim Gordon Batman was to kind of show that Batman could work within the law, but I, I don't know. For me, it, it just didn't quite come together as good as I think he could have done. It also kind of strays from the horror aspect of the book during this time. Mr. Bloom is a really good and creepy villain, but I, I, it's still kind of weak, in my opinion. And then I personally am not a huge fan of the Bat Bunny suit. I, I think it's interesting, I think it's an intriguing idea, but I, I'm not a fan. I know a lot of people really like it. Uh, some people are, are in the same boat as me and just don't. That being said, I do think it's hilarious how they acknowledge that it looks like a bunny, and it, it, yeah. Now, I don't want to sound like I hated this arc. I didn't. I do think it has some pretty cool moments, and it does offer some intriguing ideas. It's just n the weakest thing Snyder put out, in my opinion. Now, with that in mind, he did write Bruce Wayne back in one of the most epic and badass ways possible. It just felt a little long to get back to that point. Uh, again, it's not bad by any means, but I would recommend like all the others above this story arc. The Jim Gordon stuff also sir, le leads up to the finale for Snyder's run and uh, directly sets up the Rebirth Batman. Like at the end of the Jim Gordon stuff when Bruce comes back he's got the Rebirth suit. It's no longer the current suit that Batman uses but it's what he wore for the first several years when Rebirth started. And I feel like the last major note uh, for Snyder's Batman run is that he worked with artist Greg Capullo on just about every single issue. I believe only the annuals weren't always illustrated by Greg. The upside of this is if you like Greg Capullo's art, he's all over the book constantly. The downside is that if you don't like his art, he, he's on the book constantly. <laughs> Personally, I am a big fan of what Capullo does. I really like his style and I think it definitely suits Batman very, very well. And yeah, uh, once again, if you like a more horror detective story driven uh, Batman, I would definitely check out Snyder's run if you haven't already. The whole thing is really good. Um, even the Jim Gordon stuff is worth checking out, it's just not essential reading in my opinion. But again, great horror, great detective stories, Batman gets pushed to his limits quite a lot, and yeah. Moving on to Tom King's run now. Tom King's run started immediately after Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo left. Uh, the Rebirth Batman, uh, the one-shot was co-written by Snyder and King, but the uh, number one was written by Just King and illustrated by David Finch. The first arc was illustrated by David Finch and it was the I Am Gotham arc. Now, personally, I am a big fan of Tom King. I love just about everything with his name on it. His Vision run at, over at Marvel is great. Uh, his Omega Men run is absolutely phenomenal, and I do enjoy his Batman quite a lot as well. That being said, his first arc isn't really the strongest. Uh, the first arc revolves around uh, the introduction of Gotham and Gotham Girl, who are two Superman-like characters who show up and decide to help Batman. 
Over time, they become a lot more intriguing characters, but for the first arc, I just wasn't really 100% sold on them. And something about that first arc just really didn't land with me. Again, it's not bad by any means, it's just much weaker than just about everything I think I've ever read by Tom King. Uh, with all that in mind, though, it is a pretty essential uh, read, uh, especially building on the rest of his run, because everything kind of ties back to this very first issue here. One of the things that is great about Tom's run is that it is like it has been building since issue one. He says it's going to end around, I believe, like 104 or 106, and it's all building from this very first issue. Gotham Girl is still a part of it. Uh, the person who shoots down the plane in this first issue is a major player at the moment, and so on and so forth. Now, what King does differently from Snyder is he's telling a much more, like, personal and uh, even slightly poetic version of Batman. He, he's really trying to break down the character, find out what makes him tick, this, that, the other, and one of the things that a lot of people really liked is that King is kind of exploring what happens if you make Batman happy. The major thing revolving around King's arc is uh, Bruce's relationship with Selina Kyle, or Catwoman, and it leads up to the infamous wedding issue. Now, a lot of people weren't huge fans of the outcome and haven't really been fans of King since that issue, but he he's in it for the long run for sure. King himself has explicitly stated that we will see Selina again later in the run, uh, he, he's about three-fourths of the way through right now, almost, but, but he's right, he's still exploring the Batman-Catwoman relationship dynamic as well. One of the other things King does really well is he looks at Batman's relationship in the world as a whole. He's constantly pairing him up with, like, uh, whatever other character and just looking at how they interact. Two of my favorite issues from this run are the uh, double date issues with uh, it's uh, Bruce and Selina and Lois and Clark and that is one of the best analyses of Batman and Superman in my opinion, like, ever. It's really intriguing to see how the two complement each other, how they differ, and how they respect each other despite the fact that they both annoy each other. It, it, it's great. Now, a lot of Snyder's stuff gets hailed more as essential reading, whereas King's Run really only has the War of Jokes and Riddles at the moment. The War of Jokes and Riddles is not an origin story for Batman, but it is an early days story. Uh, in which the Joker goes to war with the Riddler and the two almost tear Gotham City apart and Batman's caught in the middle. Uh, it is a great read, a lot of villains are in there, they all kind of pick sides, and in my opinion, uh, everything else that Tom King has written, with the exception of the first volume, is also essential reading, but in general it doesn't quite get hailed as such. But I really like the whole analysis of Batman. King also is looking at like the fact that he's human and because of that Batman does make mistakes. He is a flawed character and so on and so forth and it's just really interesting to see like a more vulnerable Batman. King does also have some detective elements in his run. It does take a while to get there but usually the whole detective isn't the essential part of the story, or like what the story's actually about. Uh, Batman being a detective is part of the character, and King acknowledges that, and he does, he is building a mystery, and Batman is solving cases, and so on and so forth. It's just that the stories themselves don't serve to just simply solve the mystery, they also serve to analyze Batman. Following the wedding issue, Batman's working on a case involving Mr. Freeze, and again it shows that Batman is flawed and that he can make mistakes. At the moment, the story is building toward a big thing with Bane. Uh, Bane has been popping up here and there uh, throughout King's run, 
and it looks like DC is finally about to make him a huge major part of the book once again. Uh, the other major difference between King and Snyder's run is that King has worked with several artists uh, throughout the run of his series. He's worked with uh, David Finch, Michael Janin, uh, Tony Daniel, Lee Weeks, he, he's got a lot of big names up there. Again, some people like that. Uh, a lot of these artists are reoccurring. Um, Tony Daniel's been on the book twice, Janin's been on the book several times, uh, Finch has d been on the book twice. So you get your double dose of artists if you like that artist, but if you don't, then it does switch every arc or so. And that's about all I have as far as the specifics of each run. Now personally, I do myself prefer Tom King's run. Uh, I have absolutely nothing against Scott Snyder's run. I do think it is great, don't get me wrong, but King is exploring a lot of newer territory, in my opinion, for Batman, and I like how he's trying to branch out, do new things, this, that, the other, whereas Snyder just kind of told the best version of some Batman stories that we've already got. Like, horror Batman's been done before, hardcore detective Batman has been done before, and while Snyder does make those stories his own, and he does put his own unique spin on them, I just feel like he didn't do a whole lot to add to Batman as a character. I feel like he added more to Joker as a character. Which is still a good thing, don't get me wrong, I just think King's done a lot more for Batman. But don't just take my word for it, feel free to check both runs out, they are fantastic books. Both are great, uh, there's really no true better than the other in this situation, it really comes down to whichever type of story you prefer. At the moment, King's Run is still going, it has not concluded. By the time it does, like I said, it'll be double what Snyder put out, and everything King's doing has been building since issue one. So that is something to keep in mind, is that like there's no full story just yet, and that is an advantage that I will give to Scott Snyder in this scenario is that K King is still currently telling his story. But that's everything for today guys, feel free to click like and subscribe, leave a comment if you'd like to see another more specific run versus run that I haven't already mentioned, and I will see you guys again next week.